Raj, good to see you. Uh, investing in late stage uh, companies means closer to exit, right? I'm wondering whether it necessarily also means uh, more expensive and whether or not, uh, whether that's why you're in investing, you're, you're focused on companies that you already have money in because these are companies you know and uh, uh, owners or founders that you've worked with for, for years now. That's exactly our goal with the Opportunities Fund. We've got a flagship venture fund and a flagship growth fund. We really use this opportunistic pool of capital to double down on the best companies across our portfolio. We already made an investment in one company through this fund, a company called Isertis. It's a great India-US cross-border enterprise SaaS company. Um, the company's got over 250 million of, of annual recurring revenue. And it's one of those companies that we see going public in the next couple of years. Interestingly okay. enough, late stage growth tech has kind of been out of fashion for the last few years. So valuations have gone down. We actually love being contrarian and investing in some of our best companies and sometimes being able to get a discount on them. Oh, interesting. You know, we were talking to uh, the legendary emerging markets investor Mark Mobius earlier uh, this morning, in fact, uh, just a couple of minutes ago. And he started something called uh, Mobius AI Investments. He's a hedge fund, so uh, it's different uh, there. But he said something interesting. I asked him, look, uh, why is he focused so much on Asia as opposed to, let's say, uh, the developed West, where you would think the low-hanging fruit would be for AI adoption within companies, right, to make them do whatever they do, uh, faster, more efficient, and leave more money to invest in, in innovation, uh, et cetera, right? And he said, look, the track record is it's uh, companies out here in the developing world, EM, including Asia, uh, where there's more opportunity and uh, there's more potential for uh, adoption of AI because you're coming off a lower base. Do you, do you share that view? It's, it's a great point. You look at an area like fintech, Fintech in the U.S. is really competitive because you've got these large banks. It's a pretty efficient banking system in the U.S. Go to a country like Indonesia or India. What we see is that fundamentally the rails of banking don't work as well. And if you build better tools, if you build better software, what we're seeing is a really high willingness to pay, both amongst companies, small businesses, and even consumers in these emerging market countries. And so at B Capital, we've actually been more focused on fintech in places like India and Indonesia, and frankly, we have been in the U.S. Raj, uh, back to India, uh, where we have seen quite a stark correction, I've got to say, in, in India's uh, private markets. Steep valuations have uh, pulled back uh, significantly. What is that telling you, and is that an opportunity, or uh, does that tell you that uh, the environment is starting to get a bit challenging? I think, you know... It India is a market which has so much long-term potential, but frankly, we started this year with India being a, a little frothy. I think there was a lot of people who were so excited about the Indian markets that they you know, forget the fact that it still takes a while in India to build these big businesses. And there's fundamentally a difference between companies built in India for the world, where we really focus, versus companies built in India for the Indian market. And I think the former, these cross-border enterprise software companies are even starting to see biotech um, come up a bit in India and globally. I think biotech is another one of those big stories at the start of this year. Um, I think the Indian market has huge potential, but you've got to pace yourselves in, in India. We've been investing in that market for a long time. Um, and it's still a market where liquidity has been slow to come by. I think we need a few more IPOs. We need a few more kind of big companies to exit in that market. Um, and we think it's more of a 2025, 2026 story for India than even more than a 2024 story.